In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create in dimensions, circles, arcs, and ellipses. The first thing to do, as usual, is to get into sketch mode. We'll select a plane, and let's activate 2D Sketch. Now, in our case, we're going to be making a fair amount of geometry here, and this could kind of get in the way of these planes and uh, axes. So one way we could just toggle those off is to press Control, Shift, and P. And that is going to temporarily disable the reference geometry. You can also access that on the View tab with the Toggle References button. Right? So we're going to toggle that off, and we're going to go back to 2D Sketch. So the first thing we'll do is create our circle. And the way to create a circle is to left click to create the center point, and then you can drag the mouse to get a preview. Like most other figures in Libre Design, uh, you can also do a real time dimension if you like, so 2.5. And as with most other figures, you can also have uh, inferencing happen with constraints. So if I get close to the size of this bigger circle, we're gonna see it's gonna inference these little equal constraint symbols. And what that'll mean is if I move one, both of them are gonna update. Keep in mind, if you do that by accident, just go to the select tool, left click a constraint and then press delete. And then that'll go away. As far as arcs go, we have three types to choose from. A regular arc, a start, end, and radius arc, and a tangent. Let's go ahead and start with the regular arc. Uh, in this case, we will left click to create the center point. We will left click to create the starting point. And then we will rotate about the center point to define uh, the angle. Now, a lot of times it might be useful to add reference lines between the nodes of the arc. And that way we can create a dimension to get a precise angle between them, so maybe 135. The next kind of arc we have access to is the start and radius arc. And in this case, we're gonna define uh, both sides of the arc first. So we're gonna left click, we'll left click, and then we can drag the arc out in this fashion. So this arc is really good for connecting uh, figures together. For example, if you had a line over here and a line over here, and you need to connect those with an arc, well, you can just click right on the nodes and then you can do something like that. As far as dimensioning goes, it works the exact same way as the regular arc. Uh, you could create reference lines if you needed to be able to do that. Or keep in mind, you can also constrain this with nodes. So for example, if I wanted this node and this node to always be uh, vertical from each other, I could select the vertical constraint and then click the first node and then click the second node. Now, if you wanted to mention the size of the arcs, you can click the dimension tool and you can click uh, any of the arcs and you'll be defining the radius described by the R here. And in this case, we can put a value of maybe four centimeters. Sometimes though, you may wanna be able to define the diameter. And if we undo what we just did and we hold the shift key down and then click the dimension, we can see that we defined here the diameter. So we can left click to place and maybe a value of nine. The last type of arc that we have available is going to be the tangent arc. And tangent arcs cannot exist on their own because by their definition, they're trying to be tangent to an existing figure. So we'll click tangent arc. We can hover over one side of this line and just click it. And now when we move the mouse out, depending on which direction we go, we're gonna get different results, right? So you'll wanna move it kind of out in the direction that you want and you can just left click to place. Now this tangent constraint has been created, so no matter what we do uh, to this line and this arc, they're always gonna be tangent. By the way, if you wanted to create a tangent manually, you could go up to the tangent constraint and you could select uh, an arc in the line or other similar figures. Now you can create tangent arcs to lines, but you can also create them to other things like other arcs. So we can go up to this arc and create a tangent there. The last thing that we'll want to talk about is ellipses and elliptical arcs. Ellipses are located right next to the arc tool. So right up here, we'll left click that to activate it. And we'll start by left clicking to define the center point. In this case, we'll use the origin for our ellipse. We'll move out the first axis in any direction that we like. And then we'll move out the second axis to define the size. Now, similar to arcs, it might be useful here to 
create reference lines between these nodes so that you have an easier time uh, managing the ellipse, uh, both from a size perspective, but perhaps also from uh, an orientation perspective. Maybe we want this to be a vertical, and we see the ellipse uh, orientation has shifted. Creating an elliptical arc is very similar. We'll select the elliptical arc tool. We'll define the center point by left clicking. We'll move the mouse to define the first axis, move it up to define second axis, and then here, we're going to start by selecting uh, the point where we want the arc to start. So let's just click here. And then we can see that the line gets a little bit thicker, representing how far we're going around with the arc. So here I could uh, end it by left clicking, and we see that we get this elliptical arc. In this lesson, we've learned how to create three types of arcs. The first, we define the center point, and then the start and end point. We can dimension arcs with a radius by simply selecting the arc and typing a value. Or if we prefer, we can hold down shift to dimension the diameter. The start end radius arc is particularly useful when you're connecting things together. Here we can directly select the endpoint nodes and then pull out the arc as needed. Finally, the tangency arc lets you create arcs that are tangent to an existing figure. You can use lines or circles. If you want to apply tangency manually, use the tangent constraint and then left click each of the figures that you'd like to be tangent. We've also learned how to create ellipses and elliptical arcs.